Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Let's get after it. Did y'all ever see this photo that NASA put out of Earth in 2015? Now look a little more closely. Now before some of you tell me that I'm making this up, I got this directly from NASA's website and it's still there. I'm sure it's just a coincidence. Looks like NASA hired some of those disgraced former Disney artists. Reports that the months and weeks leading up to the Chernobyl disaster, everyone at the plant were seeing a creature the black bird of Chernobyl, humanoid creature, 20 foot wingspan, glowing red eyes. And what does that sound like to you? The Mothman, right? The Mothman, when the power plant melted down, the people in the power plant couldn't handle what was going on. So the immediate response was to call in the military and have the military help. Now the military came in in helicopters trying to see what's going on. And while these people in helicopters were coming in, they were seeing something fly through the clouds. This thing had like a great wingspan and it was haunting. It is interesting to see that they actually reported on it in their newspaper and came up with an artist's rendering and whatnot. It was pretty interesting. You wouldn't think that they would take something that serious, so must have been a lot of sightings. Why? Why do they not want us to know what's the big threat that we would know it's flat? What does that threaten? Because threat that's the mean? truth. They don't want us to know the truth. They want us on a ball. Don't go anywhere. You're just going to go in a circle. You're going to go stay where you're at. Don't well, go anywhere. Where, where we would, we would we explore. Go? We oh. would explore. We would we would find that there's a lot of hidden lands. Under the ice? No, on uh, the other. Like, like beyond. Oh, on the other we're side like a, of we're like, the if, ice. If we're like a lake, oh, there's a bunch I of lakes. I get it. Yeah, there's saying. a bunch I of lakes. I totally lands. get you. Okay. They're hiding land. They're not telling us about everything. Eddie, did they, oh. they got us. They got us in the center. They got us locked in in the center in, in this lake. They, they, we're not a ball spinning through space. They think we're. Do you think you're spinning a million miles an hour? No, because my hair ain't even moving. Exactly. <laughs> They're telling us we're spinning four different ways at speeds awesome. you can't see. They're telling us that the Earth is spinning on its own axis at a thousand miles an hour. That's yeah. Right. And then the Earth is spinning around the sun at 60,000 miles an hour. <laughs> and then the sun is spinning around the center of the Milky Way at 666,000 miles an hour. Everything is 666. Oh, yeah, I knew Everything that. Everything is 666. Oh, I space. knew that. Isn't, mm -hmm. that. isn't that a coincidence? No. I mean, we, <coughs> and we then, okay, all know. So don't we all know... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm joking. So they're telling us the they're telling us that we're ever. spinning a thousand miles an hour one way, sixty thousand yeah. miles an hour another way, and then six hundred thousand miles an hour another way, and then a million. Then the whole Milky Way galaxy is spinning a million miles an hour through the galaxy. Yeah. Yet we're motionless. Yet we're motionless. I have a question. Yeah. And did they, yeah. did they do the test on the water? And you said that proved. Did they do up. that oh. test? Oh, so I the tell test. a joke. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, man. when you're done, let us know because I have a question. And now I forgot it. No, it was a, and they can't come up with a cigarette that cures cancer. Good point. I love that. I don't really have a lot to say on that one. I just think it's cool seeing Eddie Bravo and, and Roseanne talking about flat earth theory. That's it. I, I just liked it. Thought I'd share it. Something really strange happened recently in a Lana Del Rey concert where hundreds of people fell down almost instantly after stating that they felt a mysterious hand or a mysterious force field touching them. To make things even stranger, people that were in the concert left comments affirming that they felt this strange and mysterious force. Some people believe this might have something to do with a satanic ritual being performed in the show. And to make things even stranger, some people believe that something similar happened in a Travis Scott concert where you can see what looks like some sort of demonic entity jumping over people. What makes things even more mysterious is that after researching the topic, I found more videos portraying these supposed demonic entities jumping over people in large events. Check this out. This is really creepy. Be very close attention. It's not a flag. New York. Just, you know, 
I am cheese with those pieces of bread. And once the burgers get done melting, I want to lay it on top of the bread. Oh my god. Not to mention that some people state that they can see a strange smoke coming out of the crowd right when they're hit with this mysterious force field. Man, not Lana Del Rey too. I swear, I'm gonna have to stop watching these because you can't, it's gonna get to the point that there's not any music to listen to anymore without feeling like you're supporting some sort of satanic rituals. Doja Cat had a very interesting thing on September 1st. She started promoting her new music video single called Demons and it is her dressed as a demon on the friends couch with the friends logo above her but instead of friends it says demons and like all of that's kind of in your face like there's some occult maybe revelation of the method going on here something's coming and the biggest reason i included this wasn't just the fact that the timing was a little odd that you know mm -hmm. less than two months before matthew perry's death she's promoting it this way you know I've, mm. friends was a popular tv show it's a whatever yeah. what's what's weird about this picture Besides the demon the on the logo. couch? Besides the demon on the couch. Besides the obvious, about the logo itself. There's no dot in between D and E. That's it, right? And I looked into this. Friends, I'm Sherlock. You are. Friends is, set up, the word friends is seven letters. And in between each letter is a dot. And there's six dots. And if you look at old promotional material for the film, you'll notice that each dot corresponds to a person. Yes. In this logo, I know it's five dots instead of six, and it's four dots because one's missing, whatever. That's not the point. The point is that it's very obvious that one of the dots is missing, that one of the dots that represents a cast member of Friends is missing. Is missing. Yeah. Interesting. Makes you, you know, that makes you wonder, like, is Matt Perry picking up on the, the fact that they're planning to kill him? And that's why he's, like sending out the bat signal that's unhinged pj don't be it's stupid. supposed to be unhinged i'm gonna get super unhinged on this show but i think it means something i don't know for certain that i think anything suspicious is going on surrounding matthew perry's passing but there is a lot of coincidences that look really funny uh if it's not suspicious it certainly looks it certainly looks to play the part i mean the, the guy his last photo if i'm remembering correctly that he posted on social media was a photo of the hot tub that he supposedly passed in so made a lot of cryptic batman references and stuff like that and talking about seeing the light and i don't know it was really weird so i was on twitter this morning and saw this post go on google earth and try to get a measurement of antarctica it won't do it because it's a ring around us. So naturally I ran straight to Google Earth. I screen recorded everything I did. I sped it up because I really wanted to capture the shape of this wall. I mean, continent. Now to cover all my bases, this is what I did next. I could find the perimeter in the middle of the ocean, the middle of Africa, and it didn't matter where I put the points. right in the middle of the continent. Now this got me thinking, why don't we journey up to the North Pole? You know, right there in the middle. I'm like speechless. So while I was sitting here pondering all this and being speechless, I went, holy shit. No matter where you set the points, it always had these little spots or a spot missing. North Pole, kind of like a little missing puzzle piece, the missing piece of the circle. Anyways, it's all a big conspiracy theory anyways. You know, I've seen this replicated 
at least a couple dozen times, and it seems like you always get some funny result. I wonder if there's some explanation for this that someone with know-how could uh, explain to me down in the comments. It does seem very odd. World's smartest kid thinks that CERN blew the world up in 2008. Maybe that fucking kid is right. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed, only transferred from form to form. But if there are an infinite number of universes, then there's 100% chance that this happened, at least maybe in another universe, maybe not ours. Then again, there's also an infinite chance that this is our universe. Joe Rogan and the world's smartest kids seem convinced that CERN is the epicenter of world-altering experiments. Maybe they're looking in the wrong direction. Like the true architects of reality bending science are just toiling away, not in the spotlight of CERN, but in dark corners so secretive, even their existence is a state secret. Quantum reality hacking, consciousness transference, time manipulation, experiments that don't just bend time, but fold it, altering the past through the present or universal simulation control. Maybe they're manipulating the parameters of our simulated universe. Tell me what you think in the comments. Where's the real Pandora's box? CERN or Secret Shadow Labs? I'm gonna go with Secret Shadow Labs because you know there's stuff being funded, experiments and whatnot that shouldn't be going on and we're the ones paying for it through uh, black programs and stuff through our government. With all that being said, I don't buy that time folding in on itself stuff. I'm still not convinced that time travel will ever be cracked. I think we'd already be seeing the effects of it if it were a thing. I mean, you would have somebody come back and try to give themselves future technology, or you would have somebody come back and try to give themselves at least lottery ticket winning numbers to a relative or something so that they could build that wealth up and pass it down generationally. Former head of Russia's space agency says that the Apollo moon landings were fake. And in a recent video going around, Vladimir Putin is briefed that several moon landing images are considered to be fake by artificial intelligence. There's a great deal of human intelligence who do not believe that the Apollo moon missions were authentic. And here are some of the reasons why. NASA was run by former Nazi Werner von Braun, who was beholden to the U.S. government for secretly importing him into the country via Project Paperclip, as were the dozens of other Nazis who joined him to work as rocket scientists, all of them with a good reason to keep a secret. And the overwhelming majority of astronauts were Freemasons and the sons of Freemasons. Freemasons swear on their lives to keep the secrets they are entrusted with. Why on earth would anyone trust NASA? And I think that's fascinating that they are openly talking about that in Russia, that all these fake exploration videos and photos and stuff are faked. Build on the job. If the moon landing was real, it would have been a miraculous achievement because NASA was failing at every level of the mission and did not believe they would be able to achieve their goal. In 1967, government inspector Thomas Barron testified before congressional investigators that the Apollo program was failing. Six days after his testimony, he was killed with his wife and child when a train crashed into his car. Astronaut Gus Grissom held an unauthorized press conference where he criticized the program and said it would take another 10 years to fly to the moon. Five days later, he was killed on the job. Gus Grissom's last words were, how are we going to get to the moon if we can't talk between two or three buildings? Hey, how are we going to get to the moon if we can't talk between three buildings? I can't hear a thing you say it. Jesus Christ. And how are get the moon if we can't talk between two or three buildings? Moments later, the Apollo 1 command module caught fire, killing astronauts Grissom, White, and Chaffee. Several key members of the Apollo mission resigned just months before the mission. 
A lot of suspicious circumstances playing out right there. Almost as if they had some guys that they knew were no-nonsense and weren't going to help keep up the ruse. But wait, there's a part three. What NASA had been successful at was a massive marketing operation that put space travel into the zeitgeist of American pop culture. And they had spent billions creating multiple sound stages with realistic models of the moon to begin producing simulations of the moon landing. NASA had several problems to solve. Problems with communications, the rockets, and the lunar module. But one of their biggest obstacles was deadly radiation. In order to reach the moon, one has to pass through what is known as the Van Allen radiation belt. And NASA announced in 2014 that this was still a problem when they launched an unmanned spacecraft to try to solve it. Radiation like this could harm the guidance systems, onboard computers, or other electronics on Orion. Naturally, we have to pass through this danger zone twice, once up and once back. But Orion has protection. Shielding will be put to the test as the vehicle cuts through the waves of radiation. Sensors aboard will record radiation levels for scientists to study. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. Aside from the Apollo moon missions, no one has ever gone past the Van Allen radiation belt. The Apollo moon mission had no protection against the radiation and astronauts don't even seem to know about it. Any ill effects from the Van Allen radiation belts? No, now I'm not sure we went far enough out to, to encounter the Van Allen radiation belt. Maybe we did. The belts are 1,000 miles to 25,000 miles above the Earth. We, then we went right out through them. And this is my biggest problem with the supposed moon lane. If we don't have a way right now to send anyone through the Van Allen radiation belt, but we have people that have supposedly been through it and have lived into old age, apparently with no problems from going through it, we could test them. We could run tests on them and find out if there's any ill effects that have, you know, any consequences from that trip. But that's not being done. It's just being assumed that it's too dangerous, even though we have supposedly people that have gone through it with no harm. But it's still too dangerous to send anyone else back through. That don't add up. It don't make any sense at all. There have been civilizations far advanced beyond where we are. When they did the, the Mars images and they found that there were these obelisk and strange looking objects on Mars. They were very ancient, but we're talking millions of years old, millions. It's been pixelated out for the public, but there are structures there. And I was out in California after I had disclosed this to some people, and a man came up to me from JPL, Jet Propulsion Labs. He knew who I was and said, Dr. Greer, here's the issue. You're right, those exist. But we can't disclose that. I said, why? It's not an operational ET device. It's not, you know, it's old. He says, yes, but you don't understand how powerful the, that this information is. I said, why? He says, if this was disclosed, it would collapse the fundamentalist orthodox belief systems of every religion on earth. I said, what? This science and this evidence is being kept secret for religious reasons? He says, yes. I don't buy that. I do believe that Greer is telling the truth that he had this conversation, but I don't buy that that's the reason that they would try to hide something from us is just religious reasons. Uh, I do know I read a report like a year ago, a year or so ago, where right before they were fixing to come out with all this UFO stuff and finally admit that they have, that we've got you know, unknown craft flying around above us. I had read a newspaper article about them taking the Pope and the head of other major uh, religions from all over the world. I think they had a group of like six or eight people uh, all went to NASA to essentially assist NASA in how to explain to the world and best break the news that God doesn't exist. In my mind, if, if we did have suddenly proof uh, believable proof that there were all these ancient structures on another planet, that doesn't necessarily disqualify the idea of an existence of a god. It just means that there's more things out there that we aren't aware of. And the Bible, if you believe in the Bible as your god, it even says that, you know, not all things are known to us. And one day all things will be made known, but that tells you right there. When that one day comes, there's going to be information that we still have yet to have revealed to us. Because if we know everything, that statement can't be true. <laughs> Thank you.
I just threw that in. I know it wasn't very long and didn't show much, but such a huge fan of the acoustic levitation and frequency levitation concept and possibility that it was used to build some of these ancient structures. So I threw it in because I like it. The, the crafts originated from uh, a planet that orbited the Zeta Reticuli star system. Zeta Reticuli 1 and Zeta Reticuli 2 are two, two stars of a binary star system. Uh, the craft allegedly came from there. One or two autopsy photographs I saw uh, dealt with just a small photograph, a bus shot essentially, just head, shoulders, and chest of an alien with a uh, uh, chest was cut open in T-fashion and one single organ was removed. Uh, the organ itself in the, in the other picture was uh, cut and vivisectioned essentially, the, uh, showing the different chambers in there. Uh, this was totally unrelated to anything I was doing but from that photograph, it looked like what you see in UFO lore as the typical gray. So how tall it was from what I could see, I, I couldn't tell because I only saw a portion of the photograph. But if everything else you see is correct, I would imagine it was three and a half or four feet tall. But uh, there again, you know, all I had to see was a photograph. And I know this doesn't directly relate to everything in that video, but this is, it just got my mind working. Um, if we can't go through this Van Allen radiation belt, why is it that these other crafts or alien species can? If we have their technology, then don't we have the technology to go through the Van Allen radiation belt? So doesn't that mean they're not coming from outside of our solar system? Wouldn't that mean that they would have to be here within our atmosphere? It's just something that popped in my head. I thought it was interesting figured I'd share. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, I make a new one just like it every single day. It would be awesome if you'd hit that subscribe button and come back tomorrow to join me. Imagine a technology that can do six to 700 G-forces, that can fly at 13,000 miles an hour, that uh, it can evade radar, and that can fly through air and water and possibly space. And oh, by the way, has no obvious signs of propulsion, no wings, no control surfaces, and yet still can defy the natural effects of Earth's gravity. That's precisely what we're seeing. So what you're telling me is that UFOs, unidentified flying objects, are real. Bill, I think we're beyond that already. The government has already stated for the record that they're real. I'm not telling you that. The United States government is telling you that. The mission of ATIP was quite simple. It was to collect and analyze information involving anomalous uh, aerial vehicles. Uh, what I guess in the vernacular, you, you call them UFOs. We call them UAPs. You know how this sounds. It sounds nutty, wacky. Uh, look, Bill, I, I'm, not, I'm not telling you that, that it doesn't sound wacky. What I'm telling you, it's real. The question is, what is it? What are its intentions? What are its capabilities? I don't like that when he says, Bill, I think we're beyond that already. The United States government's already stated that they're real. The United States government's the biggest lying corporation that they're that has ever existed. Uh, that matter-of-factness attitude that he had when he made that statement, as far as I'm concerned, that discredits everything else that's coming out of his mouth. Not Have not you all. ever asked anyone that has any inkling of any idea of where they got them or how they got them? No, but... Um, something must have been said to me, um, from Barry, and, but I, I, it was just too long ago and I, I can't quite remember what was said, but it, it just left a seed in my mind. I think at least one of them was part of an archaeological dig. So, it's old. Something, one, at least one of them is old. I don't know if it was the one I worked on, but I remember something to do with an archaeological dig. Whoa. So that's, uh... That means it's not just old, it's ancient. That'd be a great Steven Spielberg movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? <laughs> that's just telling me that we have, uh, that's more signs of advanced civilization. And see, if we found something like that, why are they hiding that from us? If we found something like that, why would they automatically assume that it's from another planet instead of saying, hey, we found it here on our planet. We know that people have lived here in the past. We found some suspicious looking things that look like they were a little more advanced than what we realize. Where's the common sense in the scientific and the archeological community? Are the images that we see of aliens accurate? Uh, are they these short creatures with huge heads, big eyeballs? Not really. I mean, there are some that resemble that a little bit. There's one species that's about uh, 39 inches tall, but the skin color of, you know, sort of a, a brownish gray, 
uh, no hair, uh, very uh, fine lips, no external penna, ear flaps, you know, the chimpanzee ears we have. Um, they don't have those, they just have an opening. There are others that are much larger. There's, uh, remember, there's at least 60 to 70 species that have been cataloged for the people I've worked with. I think uh, Sergeant Stone said there were, at that time, 68 or 69 species. And some are, uh, they're various sizes and what have you. So a lot of that's sort of a caricature in pop culture. I'll also just say, be careful of what's out there in that kind of public domain. A lot of that is disinformation, false information. Because the ones that are the caricature you're talking about are actually man-made ones that are made to look alien in art. Those are the ones that are using uh, all kinds of technologies to quote unquote abduct people. Those aren't being done by extraterrestrials. Those are doing being done by the fake aliens. And we have a whole dossier on that going back to uh, the late 50s, early 60s. So there's supposed man-made aliens, and those are the ones that abduct people and run experiments on them? This is the first time I've heard this, uh, I'm calling it a theory. I respect this guy, and uh, usually listen closely to anything he's got to say. That sounds that sounds far-fetched. Man-made aliens? Y'all tell me down in the comments what y'all think about that one. So I see a giant axe in a giant tree stump, and I think, it must have been a giant who cut it. But I stand corrected. These giant trunks were actually left by angels, and they actually used axe to cut them. And you can find clues in Daniel and Isaiah. Look at that. With an axe. Wow. What? This is why I love this community. I did not know that. Now, listen. In the Dead Sea Scrolls, apparently, this brother had said that the reason being is because the giants could have climbed these trees and escaped the flood. So the angels came down. Wah, wah, and they left a clue for us. Yeah, angels came down, used axes, and cut down giant trees. And then we have this. I left this one in here because I've always wondered, like, what is what is the point? If you have all these massive mountains that look like tree stumps, even if they were trees, and we find out and we confirm, okay, that's trees, like, what was? why are they there? Why do they look like someone cut them down with a chainsaw instead of them rotting and just collapsing over time and looking like a stuck up rotted petrified tree stump there's actually a reference in scripture that talks about this and i just thought that was really really cool because i've never even ha heard conjecture on it before an explanation at least in one place whether you want to take it as fact or fiction we actually have a, a story depicting huge trees that needed to be cut down to ensure that the giants wouldn't survive the flood that's what bob lazar said was the problem with the back engineering program he said that science can't exist like that in a vacuum the propulsion experts were not allowed to talk to the metallurgists the metallurgy experts were not allowed to talk to the biology experts. He said if they really did have physical bodies, the people that were working on the propulsion system had no knowledge of that, weren't yeah. allowed to talk about it. It was all chatter. Everyone would talk about things. And apparently there was some sort of a debriefing they gave them. And in that debriefing, he said it was so nuts. First of all, they said they would, they'd been coming here forever. And they also said that we're a product of accelerated evolution. That's the fun one. That's the Anunnaki that came down here and messed around with lower primate DNA and did something to it to create a human being. I will say that I can believe the possibility that we were tampered with in the past, especially whenever you look at human nature and how we're running all these CRISPR experiments and all this stuff and messing with DNA now. Uh, if we're going to do that to ourselves, it would be nothing for another species to, to mess with our DNA and especially if we weren't the current form that we are now. So uh, I'm not saying that I believe that happened, but it makes sense to a degree. So it turns out black holes are not eternal prisons. For a really long time, we were under the impression that once you were inside a black hole, you were never getting out of it, and that is where you would stay for eternity. But this went against everything that we thought we knew, because every law of nature says that the universe conserves information. You know the saying, energy can't be created or destroyed. So how could a black hole erase it? Then Stephen Hawking came along in the 1970s and said, well, hey, wait a second. Maybe black holes aren't destroying everything that goes inside of them. And they're actually producing radiation from the things they consumed, which means that black holes can slowly lose mass. And over time, they will continue to shrink as they produce more and more radiation until they're gone forever. And in theory, according to Brian Cox, you could collect all of this radiation, put it into a quantum computer, and then reconstruct the information of everything that fell into it. 
I think the saying that energy cannot be created nor destroyed is probably one of my favorite things, uh, one of my favorite sayings. There's not another statement out there that makes my mind race in so many different directions as that one. It makes me think about reincarnation. It makes me think about, you know, eternal existence. You know, if you can't, if energy can't be created and cannot be destroyed, then we've always been here. I've always been here. I'll always be here in some shape, fashion, or form. I just think that's fascinating. Whether it's true or not, it makes me not be that worried about dying. I'll be somewhere in my mind. So, you know, that makes me start thinking about uh, the multiverse theory and, you know, maybe your energy goes between different universes and you live different versions of the same life. Maybe you keep getting reincarnated here and living uh, different lives and walking in different people's shoes and and uh, growing as a soul. Whether you're a uh, a religious person or not. We only know what we're told in our scriptures. We only know what's supposed to be revealed to us, what we are allowed to have information on. There's a world of things out there that could take place once we pass. Crazy thing is, is most of it we'll never know about, but it's still fun to think about. It's still fun to theorize about things, and that's why I love making these videos, and that's why I love sharing this stuff with you guys. But that's the end of this one. And I'm going to go ahead and call it quits there. I'll be back tomorrow with another one. I hope you guys had a great Christmas weekend. I know I enjoyed my time with my family. Oh, one thing I wanted to say real quick. I wanted to give a shout out to two viewers, Mike and Nicole from Scotland. I really appreciated the message you guys uh, sent to me. And I know you guys didn't have the greatest Christmas. I hope that your New Year's is so much better. And if anyone else would like to reach out to me, you can do so at bandleyonline at gmail.com. And that's pretty much it. I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Be safe. I'll see you tomorrow.